Oh, hey. I know you'd be back. This place just has an effect on people. So, now that you're familiar with the area, why don't we check out some of the locals and see how they're fitting in down here? Don't worry, we'll ease into it. We're starting off strong. Meet the Dumbo Octopus, Grimpo Toothis. They get their names from their two ear-like fins that use to swim around. Similar to other members of the large Umbrella Octopus's family, they have webbing between their arms that when spread resemble an umbrella, which these guys use to search for and trap small organisms for food. The Dumbo Octopus is believed to be the deepest living of all known octopuses, since they've been seen at depths as far down as about 23,000 feet or about 7,000 meters. These adorable little guys are all but harmless to anything larger than a dime, since they only measure in at about 8 inches tall. Up next, we get the Sea Angel, Gymnosomata, and their close relatives the sea butterflies, Thecosomata. These two families share a striking resemblance to each other, with few differences. Both species are taxonomic suborders of small, free-swimming sea snails. Sea butterflies are one of the world's most abundant gastropod species, forming an essential part of the ocean food chain. They sport tiny bodies, often less than a centimeter, as well as translucent skin and thin, semi-translucent shells, offering a peek at their internals, which are those pinkish-orange bits you see. During their development, their feet grow into wide, flexible, wing-like appendages, which they use to guide themselves as they float on ocean currents. Although just as cute, don't be fooled by their name. Sea angels are also free-swimming gastropods, slightly larger, these guys are about 4-8 to eight centimeters depending on the species, but share the translucent look with their cousins. Sea angels also develop overgrown feet that resemble fins, which they can use to propel themselves after prey, which just so happens to be their own relatives, the sea butterflies. Sea angels are vicious predators, highly adapted to hunting and eating exclusively sea butterflies. That'd be like if that cousin you don't like dedicated their life to hunting you and repurposed their arms into weapons to accomplish it. So sea angels don't exactly embody their name. While we're talking about deceptive naming, we can't not meet the vampire squid. Vampirotuthis infernalis. By the way, its Latin name translates to vampire squid from hell, which is tough. However, as I stated, they are not what they claim to be. For starters, they have yet to provide proof for the existence of hell, but they also aren't even squids. They are one of two known living members of their own subgroup of cephalopods, called Vampiromorphida. The vampire squid have been recorded living at all sorts of depths below 200 meters in temperate and tropical waters. Full grown, they are only about a foot or 30 centimeters in length, not counting the arms. I don't know why they don't count the arms, but I don't make the rules. Their deception goes even further. So they're not from hell, they aren't squids, and to top it off, they aren't even vampires. I know, unbelievable. They don't hunt or ambush. These guys float around, going to town on that marine snow we talked about last time, or floating marine debris. Okay, before we sit down with these next guys, I should warn you. These are the type of people that should not be trusted around children. But I think it's important you get a grasp of all your future neighbors. First up, we have the Black Swallower, Chiasmodon Niger. Look, I'm not here to judge, but if everyone around me started calling me Swallower, I'd be seriously concerned about my public image. Although the source of a rather unfortunate name, its long lower jaw and expandable stomach make for a pretty impressive evolutionary feat. Paired with her hooked backwards facing teeth, the swallower is capable of swallowing prey up to 4 times its length and 10 times its weight, which is crucial when you measure it at only 10 inches and live as deep as 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters, where you can't exactly be a picky eater. But the black swallower isn't the only unsavory type down here. Although boasting a much less unfortunate name, the deep sea lizardfish, Bathosaurus ferox, isn't exactly a looker. However, what these guys lack in looks, they make up for with sheer violence. In fact, they are the world's deepest dwelling super predator, meaning they eat whatever they want whenever they need it, filling their own niche. I guess that means my niche is super predator of the kebab stand. The deep sea lizardfish comes equipped with razor sharp fangs that fill their jaws and are even embedded in their tongue. They are ambush predators, lying on the ocean floor with their head raised, eating anything that passes. These guys live between 2,000 and 11,500 feet and measure in at about 25 inches or 64 centimeters in length. Another interesting fact is deep sea lizardfish are hermaphroditic, meaning a single organism has both male and female reproductive organs, allowing them to mate with both sexes. This is thought to be an evolutionary counter to their sparse distributions throughout the oceans. I know meeting new people can be overwhelming and feel very foreign, 
so I saved some special ones for last. I figured you might be feeling homesick by now and thought it might be nice to see some familiar faces from home. Meet the giant sea spider, Colossundeus. Don't they just remind you of all those amazing guys crawling around your house while you sleep? The giant sea spiders are known to live on the ocean floor in the Arctic and Antarctic oceans as deep as 13,000 feet or about 4,000 meters. They use their long, spindly legs, which can grow to stretch larger than a dinner plate, to wander the ocean floor in search of mates and food. Although they share a common ancestor with spiders and crabs, they've been evolving as a separate group for hundreds of millions of years. Unlike other spiders you may know, these guys actually store their vital organs, like their breathing apparatus, inside their long legs, and use a tube-like mouth to eat prey, such as worms and jellies, off the seafloor. Last but not least is the giant isopod, Bathonomus giganteus. These guys are distant relatives of the woodlouse. Typically found as deep as 7,000 feet or about 2,100 meters, they are part of the expansive isopod family, which includes over 10,000 species, such as these guys here. Being an isopod means they are 14-legged invertebrates with segmented bodies, two pairs of antennae, and compound eyes. The giant isopod can grow up to a staggering 16 inches or 40 centimeters. For reference, your average house cat is about 18 to 20 inches or 46 to 51 centimeters. Similar to most isopods, giant isopods act as scavengers and garbage disposals. They roam the seafloor eating almost anything they come across. Usually, they move around on their 14 legs, but when necessary, they can use their fan-like tails to swim short distances. Isn't the aphotic zone such a diverse place? I hope you've enjoyed meeting all these unique creatures and it's gotten you pumped for life down here. There's so much more we could cover about the oceans and the planet as a whole. So let me know if you have any questions or disagree with anything I've said. And tell me if there's anything you want to see covered.